All right, we're recording. Welcome, everyone, to the Rink Rat Report podcast, the podcast that talks about the blue and white team from Toronto or the Toronto Maple Leafs, if you want to say it like a normal person. As always, joined by my co-host, Jason. Yeah, some might mistake us for the other blue and white team, the Toronto Marlies or the Toronto oh. Blue Jays or the Toronto Argos. But That's the most true, important true. blue and white team. <laughs> yeah, the blue and white hockey team, which would then be the Toronto Maple Leafs organization. I mean, we touch on the Marlies here and there. Yeah. I mean, you know, so I'm just, yeah. One and one, one, one and one this past week. We're going to get through, we're going to try to get through everything that's going through Twitter, right? Or no, forget about Twitter. We're trying to go through everything that's on people's mind. We'll say, yeah. how about that from this past week? And, you know, it's it's an episode where we're recording the day after a loss. So people are really on a, a low, it feels like. I mean, that game against LA was just, it was lifeless to start. The offense was just never really there. You got one power play goal. I mean, in certain games, like the Nashville loss, you can highlight, okay, they lost, but you could have won it here. There was a a bounce here that didn't go their way bounce there that didn't go their way this player played well this line played well all these players played well the la game just had none of that they they went down la smothered them la i mean they weren't like overly physical and beating up on them but la was tough to play against i'll say that so we're gonna get into themes from this past week we're gonna get into how have the new additions been uh, what are our thoughts on nine games in? We've seen good sample size of them. Is it enough? Do we need to see more? And what were the other things on the docket there? Just to look around the league and see how like the Ooh. rest of the division is shaking up. Just to just to get a pulse on the rest of the NHL, you know? That's pretty much yes. it. Because the team that's one point ahead of us right now might not be... If you haven't checked the standings, it might not be the team you think. I actually... I, ne- I literally never check the standings until like halfway through the year. Yeah. That's so that's the same I'm thing checking. because oh, interesting. it's pointless right now. <laughs> yeah. So Montreal Canadiens, the Montreal Canadiens oh have like three overtime wins this year. They have two regulation wins. That's three crazy. overtime wins. And yeah. And then first place in the division is Boston again, when people thought they were dead yet again, uh, they're back. So, so we'll see them on Thursday. Ooh, that'll yeah. be, that'll be an interesting matchup. So yeah. Let's get into themes of the week, shall we? Let's let's do it. Let's uh yeah. So from this past week, Dallas, Nashville, and then back home LA, the Leafs scored a grand total of two five on five goals. I want to say two yeah. five on five goals. And I mean, like, okay, sure. Against Nashville, they had more than a few good five on five chances that they couldn't convert on. Like that's encouraging. That's a good thing to see. If you see a lot of games like that where there are not a lot of five on five goals, but there's a lot of chances being generated, especially chances with movement, chances where the guy has time, that's a good thing to see. Unfortunately, against Dallas and against LA, you didn't see much of that at all. Right? Like the Leafs got like you know how it, it used to be, oh, we got we're getting goalie, we're getting goalie again, yeah. like this goalie from the Czechoslovakian ninth league is coming up and somehow stoning us guys. Joseph wool stole that game against Dallas. I would have gave yeah. him player of the game, but it, like three, the last... it was three <laughs> games in a row. I'm like, okay, I want to take a look at someone. I want to make this graphic with someone else in it. I'm yeah. a goalie guy. I played in net for almost 20 years now. Scared to say that I'm getting old, but I was like, I need to, I need to look at a defenseman. So that's why it went to Morgan Riley. Yeah. So, and, and I thought he played well that game. I think that Nashville game that you mentioned right there was the best game of the week from us. It feels like we, even though we lost in overtime, it feels like it was a strong game just overall. I feel like we, we outchanced them. I feel like we did all the right things that we kind of look for in the team to like, uh, as indicators of success. I mean, the, Shots for shots against 28 to 26, uh, scoring chances for high danger chances for, excuse me, five to six. I mean, yeah, lost Nashville bested us, uh, uh, Nashville bested us in well, obviously overtime, but they mm-hmm. had two power play goals for from the Brian factor. O'Reilly. 
the factor came back and bit us in the ass. Of people course. Are, people are yerping him too much. Hey, this guy can't take the limelight. He's soft. He's going to Nashville. But Hal Gill was actually on Fan 590 talking about it. And he was like, you have to like not give a shit. Like when he went from, when he was in Toronto, he was like, it was nice because it was cool because every game was game seven. It was that much mm. pressure, uh, but you can pay attention to it because like, it was just, it was too much. So he we went to Montreal eventually. And he was like, you had to just not give a shit. And then he ended up in Nashville. He's like, wow, that's great here. Like he said, he was talking to Ryan O'Reilly at a charity event and he was just mm-hmm. talking to him. They're at this event. And Ryan O'Reilly's like, how come nobody's going up to us? And Hal Gill had to tell him, hey, buddy, hey, Factor, they wait for us. You tell them when. <laughs> so it's much more relaxing, he was saying. I was like, oh, that's, that's interesting. That would not happen in Toronto. But Yeah, that's funny. Um, but yeah, let's move on from the, like, I mean, I, I don't know if there's much else to say about the Nashville game. I thought it was a good good game from the team, not the best result. Game, yeah. And then just touching on the Dallas game quickly here, I thought, like, I mean, we won, but the kind of the opposite where like we probably shouldn't have won. The what what sticks out to me is the thirty three sh- the thirty three uh, shot attempts for the Dallas Stars uh, in the second period. Craziness! Oh Absolute yeah, cra- at five on five, absolute craziness. I mean, I thought we were the better team in the first, but it seems they like Dal- Dallas Stars like kind of had the rest of the game there. But we were scoring, we were efficient, we got the power play that power play goal t- towards the end to steal the deal. Any thoughts on the Dallas game? I guess. Calling it efficient when you get out chanced, out shot, out everything, but your goal hey, fails that's, you that's out. That's efficient, and you win in regulation. Efficient. Plus against like Scott Wedgwood, one. not not their starting goalie. So, um. yeah, I mean, everyone was hoping for Ottinger versus Wool. That was the mm-hmm. tandem at US, uh, the United States Development Program. That was the tandem, the World Juniors. That was like the Battle of Boston in the NCAA. Like that's what uh, I was really hoping for that battle too. But um, I mean, Scott Wedgwood didn't play bad. It was just the Leafs got some good chances. And as you said, we're efficient on them, but that Dallas game, do you have that? Cl- the, the, the tweet I sent you with all of the Joseph wool saves. Uh, I can pull it up now. Pull it up. I'll filibuster because there was something yeah. in here. Joseph wool made, more than a few great saves in this one. It was stretching across, good saves on the breakaways, uh, good saves where he had to show his athleticism, saves when you know he was positioned very well and he was able to make the stop. But there was a few things, that because I, I, I had to, putting it together, you have to watch it through a couple times. And I noticed some things. There were just way too many chances generated by Dallas off of unforced errors by the Leafs in their own zone. Notably, TJ Brody, just TJ Brody, that huge save, that stretch save on Jason Robertson. That was because TJ Brody turned it over in the corner. There was another one. TJ Brody, he's playing his right side. You got to be able to accept passes on the back end there. Fumbled it. There was a chance that was generated off of that. There was a chance generated off of, it was a breakaway in the third period, I want to say, where John Klingberg bats the puck. I don't know what the hell he was doing at the blue line there results in a breakaway the other way. And guess what? You got bailed out by your goaltender. Uh, I could continue on and on and on, but just way too many dumb, 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 unforced mistakes that led to huge chances against like, this is something I mentioned last week and it carried over into this week too. Like if we're going to continue on the dumb, you know, mistakes thing, The Kings' fourth goal, watch John Klingberg on this. I don't know what he's doing. You could say, oh, playing the zone. Guy left his zone. He had to go check off and get back into his zone and be on Quentin Byfield. And that was actually Matthews that Matthews turned off of uh, whoever had the puck at the slot uh, in that area there. That should have been Matthews' guy blocking that shot. Okay, sure. John Klingberg then ended up tailing nobody didn't come close to anybody. And his guy was the one that made the pass through the crease and it ended up in the back of the net. Like just that, yeah, not that a ab- notable week for John Klinger. And on top of that, he had a great play on the Leafs second goal in, in Nashville and they didn't credit him with an assist. So yeah, I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to bring up that goal that you just mentioned here from the, uh, from the Klingberg. You can literally see Klingberg. It's like literally sticking with Clint- Quinton Byfield here and then just randomly peeling off. But like, like you said, he just does. Lucas Garza goes like 
Why aren't you staying with him, Klingberg? He's what like are you foot doing? Behind him. It was bananas. It was crazy. It's like not only like I, I saw people like getting mad at him for not like corralling this puck. Like, whatever. It's a ring around the board. It's not the easy thing to corral. The the he issue here should've. is not him not getting that puck. Like ob- obviously he should have, but that's not that's the major it. issue here. The major issue is one, not following. Two, it's going with this guy. Three, if you're gonna go with that guy. Stay with him. It's crazy. So, but also, it's like bad, he bad he there. faked out Matthews. It didn't look like at yeah, any was... point he was going to take that guy. He went, oh, like, are you a receiver running a route? Why are you <laughs> cutting like that? I've never was... seen that before. Yeah, it was bad. And here's the Joseph Wall stuff you wanted to touch on. I don't know exactly what point in the video you wanted to touch on it with the Joseph Wall against Dallas game, but tons of good saves from Joseph Wall here. Great stuff. Oh, that was uh, another one. That was a, a huge save off the the knob. But uh, go right to the beginning on it. This is another play. Giordano getting walked. Lovely. Watch Brody own end turnover, and it results in Joseph Wool doing splits that not many people can. Not many people are this flexible. Like that's yeah. ridiculous. Here, look at this play. This is a huge chance. Oh, go back to the video there, real quick. This is a huge chance that was generated off of nothing. It's a great breakaway chance. That was it was just a nothing play. This is another one. If you keep letting this one go, oh, never mind. We can skip it. It's fine. <laughs> Unforced Sorry. errors, just idiocy. I don't know how else to put it. So yeah, I think I think that's like one of the. We'll get into like our biggest takeaways of the week, but that's like a big thing that I noticed this week was you're right turnovers and just putting ourselves in poor position. Mm-hmm. And I think maybe that is reflective. The, the coaching staff probably feels the same way as us. Cause guess what? They're not on the ice today. Usually when you're not on the ice, that seems like a punishment, right? It's like you played like shit. We're going to be sitting in the film room all day. We're going through what we're doing wrong here. Cause it's not, the issue isn't like your guys ability to play. You guys are all good hockey mm-hmm. players. It's between the eyes, or between, excuse me, between the ears and your head. You guys are making these silly decisions that are creating poor, poor outcomes for us. So, um, yeah, exactly. So you had a big takeaway as well for this week. But before we get into that takeaway, I want to say this. It's not a bird. It's not a plane. It's a ball trimmer, trimmer sent from space. That's right. This is an ad read from our friends at Manscaped. Gentlemen, our friends over at Manscaped have been working night and day to bring you a below-the-waist grooming experience like none other with their brand-new Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. We're talking about a next-generation trimmer with interchangeable blade heads for whatever shave your mind can imagine. Upgrade your grooming game to the Ultra Sphere this year by going to manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping with code RINKRAT. That is R I N K. R A T. I mean, I never had to shave my pubes in space, but if I were to, Manscaped would be my number one. If I had to shave my pubes on Earth, Manscaped is also my number one. So high tech for the low places, Manscaped, rink rat at manscaped.com. Manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping. Yeah. Let's get into Beautiful. the takeaway. Yeah. So let's get into the takeaways here. Um, I mean, you want to start with my takeaway or your takeaway? My takeaway kind of just let's let's go with mine. Why not? My takeaway is kind of ba- built off of what you just mentioned here with what uh, what you were talking about with Joseph Wall and the turnovers, and I think that's kind of highlighted what we have. Like the turnovers are bad, but it's highlighted what we have in Joseph Wall, and I think Joseph <laughs> Wall is is like legit good. And I'm not talking about like like I- I'm not talking about guy who's having one hot year who's like. We, we don't know what he's going to be like the year after. Like, this guy might be like a legit, legit, like goalie that you can have in your system long term. And it feels good because I, I know this is a big talking point from everyone that we've been, uh, we finally have a homegrown guy here. But like, if you think about the Leafs of the past, I've never, I, like, I honestly never in my life have seen a blue and white jersey look like this in net, just the way that he plays, his style of play. And he looks really, really good. Like, just, I don't know what, what it is to describe it, but when I watch him play, I'm like, this guy is a goalie. And has a chance to become a really good goalie. Like I hate, like I think he could potentially creep his way into like the top twenty goalie conversation by the end of this year if he continues All to right. play how he's playing. Maybe that's generous, but I mean that's my biggest takeaway is that he is far and away right now at least the number one on this team. If you want to have a one A one B, however you want to call it, however you want to call this split, with how poorly Samsonov is playing, 
not that is besides the point. I, f- I feel like Samsonov could be playing right well, well right now, and I think I would still take Joseph Wool over Samsonov. He has proven that he should, he's deserved, and he's earned this number one spot so far. I mean, it's tough to go back and look through his games and kind of blame him for any of the m- many of these goals. A lot of them were just like just thinking back to the LA game that that goal on the power play from Kaliev, like very clearly was screened on that goal. Nothing he could have he, done there. He reacted late on that one, but Off- Kaliev has a hell of a shot too. Yeah, like and it also the puck was moving east east west, and I think it went over a couple times there. So it's it, that's those things are hard to go. So. That's my biggest thing. And, and on top of that, it feels like he's this is now the, the third year he's done it. Last two years, tiny sample, but like he looks good. He's ready, I think. And oh, that's my biggest takeaway this week. Joseph yeah. Wall, stud. Oh, 100% a stud. I, I, I think, I mean, th- you, as you mentioned with the confidence in the, like with having a goalie that you're that confident behind you, the last time, I mean, Frederick Anderson for three years, I think he had a 917, 918, 918, something like that. I felt that confident with him back there. Like mm-hmm. he was he was a top 10 goaltender. Over those three years, he was a top 10 goaltender for sure. I felt like in the NHL. Um, before that was Ed Belfour, 100%. That guy was a stud for two years at the Leafs. Unfortunately, post-lockout didn't work as well. And then before that was Curtis Joseph. So like those were the fantastic goaltenders of my Leafs lifetime, we'll call it, that I had the utmost confidence in. But yes, um, Joseph Wool right now, extreme. I'm extremely confident. I mean, that game against LA, okay, we'll call it not a great game for him. He made one, one or two huge saves. I will say though, but four goals on 26 shots or whatever. Okay, like I'm not gonna fawn over that game. Mm-hmm. I thought he still played solid. Like the angling goal, yeah. it's a tip by your own team in the back of the net. What are you going to do there? As you mentioned, Kaliev, uh, threw a screen in the back of the net. What are you going to do the power there? Play. On the power play. Uh, there was one other one I can't remember. It was the second goal, and I can't remember exactly what it was either. But yeah, like I just think that the body of work that Joseph Walls put together. Oh, so far uh, this season, backdoor pass. Uh, uh, Timothy yeah, Logan yeah, yeah, yeah. got walked oh, yeah, by yeah, Trevor yeah. Moore. Fourth line got running around. Backdoor pass again. What, what the hell are you going to do there? But and then the last one we covered the Klingberg goal. <laughs> we covered that one pretty damn well. Um, but I will say in this game, when it was four one, the Leafs were pressing heavy offensively. Riley was trying to play forward because that's what the defenseman should be doing when you're tra- yeah. when you need to score a goal, and it doesn't matter how many you let in because. It's 4-1. Who cares? What do you lose? 5-1? Ooh, Doesn't oh, no. Doesn't yeah. matter. There were a few great opportunities by the Kings, and they either missed the net or Joseph Wool made a good save on it. Like, Mostly there was a few odd that, man. It's garbage odd time, rushes, so you're yeah. not going to get, like, oh, huge save. But, like, they were missing on them. Like, it was, it was like, oh, no, this is a good shooter, good opportunity, nothing. I was like, oh, it's a good save there. Good good play. Cut yeah, off the angle I, well. So. And, and I think, again, the biggest thing – like I'm hoping I I'm I'm expecting the sky to be the limit with Justin Hall right here or jo- Joseph Wall right here. Ooh, wow! <laughs> wow, that was Demons a coming cra- back to get you there. Cra- crazy slip. Uh, with Joseph Wall here, like the sky is legit the limit. And I, again, just to wrap this all up, this is the missing piece. I feel like we've always kind of haven't had. Right? No offense to Frederick Anderson, it just seems like those first couple of years he was able to do it, but like ever since that like second Boston series. He was never able to really like stick it, stick it with us in the playoffs, like injuries or, or whatever it was. Right. So this is, feels like the missing piece. So I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited for Joseph. Wall. What was your biggest takeaway this week? So I mentioned the unforced errors and I mentioned earlier, five on five scoring is just non-existent. It's seemingly with almost everyone. I mean, maybe William Nylander, but like maybe actually, did he even have a five on five point this this week? I don't think so. I'm not. I'm not. I don't think so. I think just overall saying it, I, I'll, I'll lump everyone into this. I mean, the Leafs have two or three games in which they scored more than two five on five goals. That's horrible. It's being pro- that number isn't like it's like bad ish right now because they scored five five on five goals against Minnesota, Montreal. Mm-hmm. They had zero. Minnesota, they had five. Okay, sure. They had what one against Chicago, I want to say, this past week. Zero against LA. One against Nashville. One against Dallas. Like, 
that's not good enough. It's it's really really bad. And I mean, it's a part partly it's they haven't quite figured out the top six lines. I mean, we saw the blender come out. We saw Nylander, Matthews, uh, Marner together. Um, we saw Bertuzzi benched in the third period, which I did not. I was not a big fan of uh, at all. And no. Matthew Nyes, Max Domi, Callie Yarncroc. I was sorry. Matthew Nyes, Max Domi, David Camp. Outside of that Tampa game, do they have a five on five point? I mean, maybe Max Domi does against Nashville. But anyways, it's like Yeah, it was it was the five the enough. Yeah, yeah. Not not enough. And I agree with you. And I, I can tell you can tell also like I think Sheldon Keefe kind of felt that way, especially with the end of that LA game. Like you said, for Tuesday thing benching, I don't get. He also pulled Klingberg off the first power play, which I also don't get. I thought that like he wasn't playing very well. I get that he was like maybe that's a punishment for that fourth goal, but uh, it was before I, that. Was it before that? I don't even know. Like I just think again, we went we went through why I thought that he was working on the power play. Um, but also you have to look at Morgan Riley's playing well. Morgan Riley's playing good hockey. Yep, in my that's opinion. fair. I haven't seen too many defensive blemishes like we had last year and seasons before. I think it's it's been very positive for Morgan Riley so far this year. So how are you going to keep him off the first power play? Can I say one thing though? What what if it, part of the reason why he's doing so well is because he's not logging those minutes on the first power play? He's also he's looked good. Huge minutes. That's true, but, but he's also twenty-seven minutes against da- Dallas because Jake play- Jake McCabe, which we buried the lead, he he's injured right now. Yes, Jake McCabe got injured. William, La- William yeah. Lagason. Yeah, right. And so, yeah. well, my thing with with Riley though is I just think, anyways, if the way that they their style of plays kind of work. Klingberg is, I like I broke it down. I think he works better on power play one, and I think Riley works better on power play two. Oddly enough, like. Just because, like, you want it, like, it's not as good as the other power plays. So you kind of want your shots coming from the point. You want Morgan Riley to kind of be getting that puck and shooting it quick. You want him to kind of go end to end there because you don't have as good transition players. You want him touching the puck because he's probably one of the better players on the ice for the Leafs. That's why, like, I think I like him better than Klingberg on that second power play. Sorry, go ahead. I swear Klingberg shoots the puck more than Morgan Riley does. Yeah, but I, I would argue he's more of a shot threat than Morgan Riley is. And he hasn't been this year on the power that's play. That's true. That's true. And also, do but you want Klingberg shooting or do you want Austin Matthews? And you obviously Neilander want Austin, Austin Matthews shooting, but you also right. want to have that that defenseman be a shot threat so that the power that penalty yeah. kill has to account for that and not play him soft because you know if he shoots, it's not going to really be that effective of a shot, right? I'd rather have the guy who is mm-hmm. a threat who makes you constantly think and think and think and leave Austin Matthews open. So, anyways, I I I don't want to get us sidetracked on this convo. I I agree with you though. Like, we do need to, um, like, Riley has more power play points done. than Klingberg right now. Yeah, there is a lot more work that needs to be done. So, yeah, yeah. But um, anyways, um, the ice sucked. That was another taste <laughs> takeaway. The whole ice. That was horrible. Yeah, the, the, the richest I, team I, in the NHL, the most important team in the NHL has the worst ice in the NHL. That was awful. Everyone was falling. I'll, I'll try to find it, but you know the end of the game uh, montages that uh, TSN and Sportsnet will put up where they show like some highlights, some hits, some chance shots, some of the goals that ha- went on, maybe some pictures of guys on the bench yelling or whatever. You know those things where it's like, so long, thank you, and you got some guys. Ugh. Like one of those. Yes. Half of the clips were people falling on the ice. <laughs> Untouched. Just like, oh, like, what's going on here? Was there a bunch of banana peels on the ice? Like, did someone like do the, like Zamboni the ice and then go, mm, you know what this ice could use? A pinch of salt. A pinch <laughs> of salt here and a pinch of salt there. Like, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Should we just it start was... playing outdoors? Like open the Rogers Center dome, dome and just play there because the ice at Scotiabank is clearly like that. That's malpractice. I don't know what's yeah. going on there, but they need to fix that because that was a nationally televised game on ESPN, and you had guys falling over themselves left, right, and center. Yeah, it wasn't embarrassing. Good. And I wonder if it was just like there was kind of I don't want to call it a heat wave, but it was kind of warm in Toronto over the weekend. Maybe that affected it. I don't know. Maybe, like 
Listen, freezing yesterday. On on the weekend. Yeah. Like I don't know. Would that affect any? I don't. I don't know. I don't know science. I'm not a science guy. You don't see me with thermometers and stuff. I'm not a meteorologist. Anyways, um, needs to be figured out. We're on the road against Boston on Thursday. Then we're back at home on Saturday. I'll be live in person. So I will be reporting on the ice rink side to Try let to you guys get know how. Ice. Tell us. Yeah. I might get, get some hands. samples of the ice too to see get if there's the any ground. salt in there. But uh... Get your thermometer ready. Yep. <laughs> it's not good enough. <laughs> exactly. And when I bust out my thermometer, you already know that it's going to be a thermometer that is sponsored by DraftKings like this podcast is sponsored by DraftKings. Guys, you know it well. The NFL season is going strong and DraftKings Sportsbook is hooking up new customers with an offer that is even stronger. Bet five bucks on any game this week. Score $200 instantly in bonus bets. And guess what? DraftKings is not stopping there. All customers can take advantage of a sweetener offer every game day. Love to use uh, DraftKings to bet on sports because they sometimes have really good odds. So when you're betting, make sure you always get the best odds and DraftKings sometimes has the best odds out there line shop. So uh, get in on the game day greatness. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code THPN. New new customers can score $200 instantly in bonus bets when you bet five on the NFL. That's code THPN only at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NHL. Crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE. New York or text HOPE New York 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort. Licensee partner, Golden Nugget, Golden Nugget Lake Charles. 21 plus eight juries by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See sportsbook.draftkings.com slash football terms for eligibility and deposit restriction terms and responsible gambling resources. Make sure you always shop around before you bet. And DraftKings often has some pretty good odds, especially on some props. So you might want to open it up as a sports book using code THPN. Sorry about that. I just had to figure out a way to wedge that in there. I don't know if that made sense with the, 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 the DraftKings sponsored thermometer. It's kind of bananas. It didn't, but, uh, but that's okay. We know what you meant. It's all yeah. good. I'm gonna yeah. maybe we, maybe we reach out to DraftKings and see if they can make us a DraftKings a thermometer. Theme, thermometer, yeah. Why I'm not? Sure. <laughs> anyways, uh, anyways. <laughs> uh, so you were we were talking about like we just just closed out basically the biggest takeaways of the week. What we felt like were the biggest takeaways of the week. But I just want to touch on what you said there about the work that has to be done, right? And I think we should look look to the history to not repeat the history, right? So historically we've kind of been bad in October and you have some stats for this that you can bring up in a second here, yeah. but there's something that I just looked up and I listen, I have no idea if these stats mean anything, but I was just looking and I'm curious, right? So the lease right now and expected goals for very, very odd because they're usually among one of the better expect expected goal for percentage teams in the league, right? They're sitting at 48% in the NHL right now which is very odd. So in, I think it's like 400 minutes of hockey at five on five, they're, they have a worse, they have less expected full goals for, excuse me, than expected goals against. And so I looked a little, and I'm, I looked, and I said, okay, interesting. Why is that? Why could that be? So I looked a little bit and I, I adjusted for the game state, right? So I looked at the Leafs when they're tied. I looked at the Leafs when they're trailing. And I looked at the Leafs when they're leading, right? And I noticed something interesting. So when the Leafs are tied, when it's a tie game, at five on five, the Leafs have a 52.37 expected goals for percentage. That puts them around the top eight in the league, okay? When they're trailing, when they're trailing, they are they have an expected goals for a 55.4%, which puts them in the top 10 in the league. The problem comes when they are leading. So when the Leafs are ahead, they have a 38.66 expected goals for. That puts them at 28th in the league. Does that mean anything? So I all of those know. rankings, though, those are like like all the teams in the NHL Correct. when they're trailing, when they're when tied, they're trailing. When they're, 
Yes. Yes. But okay. all the teams oh, are trailing. Make sure of that. So they're like ten to eight when they're mm-hmm. trailing or tied compared to the rest of the NHL. They're in the top third of the league. But when they're ahead, for some reason, we are in the bo- we are twenty eighth in the league. So mm-hmm. I don't know if that means anything. Also, minutes wise, because that's very important here. The Leafs have one hundred twenty four minutes when they're leading, one hundred sixty one minutes trailing and they have 160 141 excuse me minutes tied so all pretty even sample size there right so it's like it's not like what like they only have five minutes where they're leading and that's why right they're give. i, I don't know you, you know what i'm saying here right yeah I, no, does I do. first of all does this even mean anything do you think this is partially contributing? Because maybe we have so. to look one step deeper and see how they deploy deploy players when they're leading. Is it because they're throwing out their fourth line as much as possible when they're leading? Could that be leading to a poor expected goals for percentage? What systems change? System changing, maybe the way that like maybe we just are not as aggressive as we want to be when we're leading, and it's causing for us to like listen, when you're leading games, you're probably gonna lose the expected goal for battle, but to have a 38% expected yeah. goals for 28th in the nhl that, yeah 28th that's like that's oddly very very low for for this this leafs team that is hmm. not a number you ever really hear that low especially an, ex, an expected goals number that low for this team here like it's just odd i don't know and it's yeah. all at five on five again so anyways i i what, find that what, this season there's been way too many times where they've been hemmed in their zone we saw a great example against oh, la end of the second period two minutes and 45 seconds in their own end oh my god i don't know like they didn't give up too many chances but they didn't have the puck they didn't even come close to touching the puck the entire time like that they, there's been way too many times where they just hemmed in their end for way too long and like a lot of it, I will say, like the fourth line <laughs> happens way too often with them. I'll tell you that one. Um, yeah. Bertuzzi getting caught at the end of it was Bertuzzi Yarncrock. I can't remember who the center was. That was, that was just like they deserved to get booed for that. One. <laughs> I would have been very frustrated too. Yeah. But, I mean, uh, it's a risky not- investment, those midday leaf, uh, midweek leaf games, because <laughs> sometimes they just mail it in so bad. <laughs> and the crowd is so bad too. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah. The, the, I had a friend at the game, and he like he's not like a big Leafs fan. He just kind of like his girlfriend got tickets, whatever. So he went with his girlfriend. Likes the Leafs probably more than he does. He's more of a basketball guy. Anyways, um, he said the vibes around here are horrible. It's like everyone's yeah, so are. miserable. Like, uh, like you're at a, you're you just paid three hundred dollars to go to a game. Why are you doing this if you're so miserable? It's like I don't. Know. It's a good question. I don't know. It's, a, so. it's an illness. <laughs> it's an illness. It's the only way to put it. But yeah, I, 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 is the passion an illness? More I don't know. On sixty minutes, um, <laughs> so yeah. Well, I, anyways, we 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 kind of got sidetracked here. I I don't know what to make of those stats. Maybe you can tell us what to make of the like you, the listener. If that has any bearing on you, like I don't know. I'm just. I it just does. Thought- I think that is important. Like situational play has not been good for the Leafs so far this year. I mean, when do we see them? with you know with some jump with some some spunk it's when they're down they finally start to to get things going but like early on i mean what's interesting in that stat that you mentioned is that when they're tied they're it's a 52 percent goal yeah 52 uh, goal share but i will say some good examples of like when they're leading and getting caved in the washington game the dallas stars game there was a good stretch in the minnesota game where they just decided to mail it in, gave up a couple goals, made it a close game. Minnesota, when they were only up by one goal, the Leafs, Minnesota like was getting chance after chance. And then the Leafs finally broke away with it. But I'm trying to think what, what were some other wins in which Montreal, they were never winning down Tampa Bay. They were never winning. Um, What were some other wins? Chicago, were they winning in that one? No, they were losing. They were losing. It's, they were tied and then tied. There, there's been stretches when they were leading, though. That's like the most important thing I pulled away from it yeah. is that again, like they're 112, 112 minutes mm-hmm. while while leading. So it's like I don't that know. It's just such a somewhat of a sample size. It's, it's yeah. small. It is early, but that is interesting to bring up, and it's definitely something to monitor. Yeah, exactly. And 
that this is all at five on five as well. So this isn't like a six on five situation where they pull their goalie, right? Or where they, yeah, I don't know where the like, I don't, I, yeah, it's, it's yeah, at a five on five neutral yeah. game state. So the the one positive thing I did pull from it though is that when the game is tied, when it's in a neutral game script, when it's in a neutral, like when both teams are trying to win here, both teams are trying to get a goal, not one team pushing and one team like playing less. Yeah. We are at a positive expected goal for mm. uh, differential, which is. A good indicator, I guess. I don't know. It's all right. Yeah. <laughs> so, hey, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta look for the good with the bad. You know, you yeah, like whenever exactly. there's bad, you always gotta find that little shine of light. So, anyways, you you wanted to compare previous year stats to this. Oh, year. Um, well, it's essentially just record from past two seasons. So, in twenty one twenty two, the Leafs had a fifty win season. Pretty successful, I would say. They were four, they ended October four, four, and one, right? Last season, they ended October four, four, and two. The Leafs ended this October five, three, and one. So a better record than the past two seasons. What does that tell you? Not much. It's early. Like I wouldn't get too hung up on this mm -hmm. LA game or this Chicago game, right? There's still a lot left to prove. And I mean, People make the joke the Leafs have won the November Cup three years in a row. So, like, if they don't play well in November, well, like, you are, you know, now setting yourself away from the pack. And that's not a good thing. Remember, our panic date every season is November 19th. Yeah. Right? So, that's where, like, it, it's still early. The, the stats are in a small sample size. A yes. lot can change. Yes. So I wouldn't get too, too hung up on this, but the stat that you mentioned, Jason is something to monitor for sure. Yes. Something to monitor. And again, like it could just be a small sample thing. I remember it was literally the week of November 8th. I don't know if we released the episode on November 8th, but it, it was around that time. Mm -hmm. And we were like, yo, this team might not be good. Like this might be a, and this was, I think two or three years ago, it was the Pittsburgh year that I brought up last episode. And oh, we're yeah. like, we like, we're like, okay, we have to give it one week. And after this week, if things are going bad, we have to smash the panic button. And I think they just dominated. They had a four-game week, yeah. and they just dominated every single freaking game and looked amazing. So, like, hey, November is when we shine. Let's uh, – <laughs> The November Cup, go. baby. The road to no the November Cup. Let's go. Yeah, um, and then – Let's take yeah. a look, though, at, at that that season. I don't know why when I want to transition, I, I give a big, loud um – probably pretty annoying to listen to but let's take a look so november 2nd they actually ended that year so 21 22 the issue was that they started two four and one right they yeah. had the three two loss to ottawa to start i think that was their first loss of the year where they lost peter Mrazek. but the seven one loss to pittsburgh was just that devastating was because crosby was out Gensel was out. Malkin was out. We were playing the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins, and you got the wheels blown off of you. It wasn't even close. 7-1. And then from October 27th on, the, remember October 27th, things were not looking good. That 4-1 Hurricanes loss, they couldn't generate any offense. It was so frustrating. They were losing to the Blackhawks, and it was just frustration city out there. If you remember... Austin Matthews was looking for a pass from Justin Hall. Justin Hall didn't pass and he smashed his stick. But then William Nylander helped them. You know, they pulled through in overtime. And then that's where. Then they beat the Red Wings 5-4. Again, that was another not good team. They barely squeaked out. So it was like, they really got to pick it up. Then 4 nothing Knights win. 2-1 OT win against the Lightning. You remember Marner took a high hit from Sergachev in that one. 5-2 yes. uh, Bruins win. And then... LA at home five one loss, kind of similar to the one we just experienced. But yeah. if history is any indicator of anything, the Leafs like to play the the Kings one stinky game a year and one really good game a year. So yeah, we got over this, the past got, two seasons, perfect. We got the stinky one out of the way. The good one, one will be coming up. Coming in LA. Up, uh, in LA, beautiful. Right. So I love that. Just a and, reminder: it's early. We it's have Austin Matthews and Mitch Marner are going to figure it out. Austin Matthews this season, 21-22, Austin Matthews through his first six games had two points. Mitch Marner through his first nine games had three points. Last season, 
if you even look at that one, they didn't start as cold, I would say, but they have more points this season, probably due to Austin Matthews having two hat tricks in <laughs> two games. He has not scored a five on five goal since the second game of the season. Yeah. So I'll say this year is a lot colder than last season, but you know, it's the Leafs are not good starters. Let's just call it what it is. Yeah. And I, again, last thing to say here, I think our goaltending is, has been legit number one and mm-hmm. has like, I mean, I think it's, like we will be able to maintain this this goaltending level, right? Yeah. We are shooting six percent at five on five. Six percent. We have a nine seventy PDO. Okay. If our goaltending stays the same and we get a little bit of an uptick in shooting percentage, can make a lot of problems go away. PDO comes for all. So that's true. I will um, say I don't know if Joseph Wool can sustain a nine fifty or whatever, but one five? The ag, uh, what's he uh, at? Uh, he's at a nine fifty, but I also think that oh. Ilya Samsonov won't be at like a yeah. The aggregate of the two yeah. will come together. <laughs> come I will together. say exactly. though, I, I do want to say Samsonov against Aunt Nashville was pretty not good. So I really need him to rebound against Boston because I yeah. really didn't like what I saw against Nashville. That first goal was not good. He did not play it very well. You're supposed to go from. RVH, when the guy starts to come out in front, you're supposed to go into Butterfly. He didn't. He gave Ryan O'Reilly the f- whole far side. And then on top of that, Ryan O'Reilly slipped at five goal. The second goal, obviously not his fault. Oh, we got it here. Yeah. So watch this. So stop it. Ryan O'Reilly got the puck from below the goal line. You're in RVH. Perfect. RVH, the purpose of it is you seal the bottom of the net. Okay. He's in a good position right here. Play it a little bit. Stop it here. At this point here, O'Reilly can probably see a little bit. It's dicey there, but Ryan O'Reilly takes this out a little bit further. That's when you have to come off that post and you can't give him that whole far side. He's got a lot of net to shoot at here and keep going with it. There's another replay after this. So it's another replay here. He comes out, and then this is where you could start to see he has that whole far side of the net. You need to come off your post a little bit. You need to get into your butterfly and take up that far side of the net. He doesn't. He has the far side of the net open, and his five hold is wide open as well. It's something yeah, he, even, he knows that he made a mistake there. He made, it was a massive mistake, and it resulted in a very weak goal against, in my opinion. Yeah, and you can even see like he he's like challenging O'Reilly and not like the puck, you know? It feels like his body's like not tracking with the puck. Well, anyways. Well, yeah, he didn't. Yeah, exactly. Which is not what you're supposed to be doing. Not what you're supposed and to then be. some <laughs> other plays just fumbling a puck when he came out to get it. The overtime goal wasn't anything that special. I don't know. It didn't hit the post and in. It was just a shot, right? So, we'll see. I think oh, I really do think Samsonov will eventually figure it out but he made some comments recently that worry me where if it looks like i'm feeling okay i'm not some i'm paraphrasing but he says he feels like shit it's like that's you're not going to play well when you feel like shit so he needs big to test go for to him the alps yeah exactly <laughs> big test, big for, test him on, for him against boston yeah boston's look like the hottest team is the hottest team in the league right now uh let's get into our like let's let's talk about some of the I think we we were, we mentioned this earlier on the show. We're going to talk about some new additions. Yeah, the new acquisitions on the team this year. Before we do that though, last sponsor of the day. I want to give a quick shout out to our sponsors over at Raycon. It may be too early to start decorating for the holidays, but it's never too early to start your holiday shopping. Why not take care of it now before the crowds and packed calendars make shopping a total nightmare? Especially when you can come get some of the best deals of the season well before Black Friday. You can shop Raycon products right now and save up to 50% off because their entire, their, excuse me, their early Black Friday sale is going on now. You heard me uh, talk about the Raycon products throughout the summer. They are great to use if you're going on a walk, but guess what? You're not really going to be going on a walk in this winter weather. They're the best when you're cozied up by the fire and want to listen to a just like a nice little Christmas soundtrack here or Hanukkah, whatever you celebrate, Kwanzaa, whatever. Uh, the 
if you want to listen to that music, Raycon is your best bet. Raycons first made a name for themselves in the audio space with products like the Everyday Earbuds, known for delivering high quality and and thoughtful features like a 32-hour battery life and a perfect in-ear fit for all day wear and lasting comfort. And this past year, they expanded their entire business with the introduction of Raycon Home and Raycon Power Tech. Their five-star reviewed products, uh, excuse me, their five-star reviewed Magic 180 cable allows you to charge iOS, micro USB, and Type-C devices eight times faster with 100-watt power delivery. Their faucet filter ultra filler filters that water in your filters that the water in your tap against chlorine and heavy metals it's a must have for ensuring the water you use to wash your face and brush your teeth is you know actually clean uh raycon is known for delivering high quality and thoughtful features at half the price of other premium tech brands it's no wonder their products have racked up tens of thousands of five stars reviews across the board to get everyone in the holiday shopping spirit a bit early raycon is currently offering 20 percent off everything on their site and select products up to 50 percent off so beat the crowds and save now trust me you do not want to miss out on raycon's early black black friday sale hurry now to buy raycon.com slash thpn to get 20 20 to 50 percent off site-wide that is buy raycon.com slash thpn to score up to 50 percent off raycon products buy raycon.com slash thpn go buy your raycon stuff yeah. You know, you know how much chlorine they put in the water? It's crazy. If you live in England, it's not applicable to you, but in the States and Canada, they put chlorine in the water. So be careful. It's it's really? it's fine though. Yeah. It's, it's... all right. <laughs> I didn't I didn't Raycon makes water filters. Today I learned. I didn't realize that. So that's amazing. All right. So to get into the new acquisitions, uh, I have a voice note here. You can send us your voice notes at Rink Rat Report, Twitter, Instagram, whatever. We will play them. Here's one that we got on the new acquisitions. Um, I'll play it through the microphone right now. Hopefully this goes well. Sounds good. The new acquisitions on the Leafs. To be honest, as a big Leafs fan, as one that's been one for 20 years, I honestly have never been more excited for the beginning of a season uh, for a long time until this year. Um, I find Pertuzzi's playing decent, but he hasn't found his game. I'm not scared he won't. Uh, Klinberg, I don't like that idea. I never did. I still don't. I think that's you could use that money towards put, getting, you know, a Luke Shen was three mil, and I guess that's you know that's expensive for Luke Shen, but I way would rather him at two point seven five than Klinberg at anything. Um, Domi needs to find his game. He's nervous about that. Uh, I'm scared he won't. And the Leafs need to figure out goaltending ASAP. Even with an elite defender that they could go trade for, which is out there, um, they need to figure out that goaltending. Um, and I'm worried that they won't be able to anytime soon. Okay, so JC nine oh two underscore. I thought it was it was it was it was pretty fair, right? I, I, the goaltending part. I mean, like you have one, the other one's not playing very well. So yeah. Two is better than yeah. one, obviously. But your thoughts I, on that? I, listen, I agree with the goaltending, like the the goaltending part. Maybe we might need like a third goaltender as like a backup. But I think our goaltending has been fine. I think it's like, listen, I think everything you said has been fair there. But like, let's go deep and kind of unpack. Mm-hmm. Um, let's unpack this, I guess. Right? Like, I mean, guess who leads all the new acquisitions and points? John Klingberg. John that's crazy yeah domi with four bertuzzi with three reeves with zero matthew nice i think also has four but yeah so let's play. let's start with the the, the tyler bertuzzi thing because i think that's the biggest one um how do you feel like he's i think i think i think the the voice the listener there was kind of right where i think i'm not worried about bertuzzi i think he's actually been good while the on ice product isn't really there yet his underlying number yeah yeah his his sorry production thank you his on ice numbers have been very good he is third in the lease right now and expect expected uh goals for excuse me goal for percentage is expect yes he's first in the lease expected goals for percentage on the ice 61.78 percent here he's been arguably the best leaf at five on five generating uh chances for and against Crazy 3.06 expected goals for per 60 for him when he's on the ice here. I think he's been really good for the team. Not only in like just being like a little bit of a, an annoying little pest, but just 
again, like, like we talked about, just generating chances. And I think, I think he's a lot better than I expected, honestly. Again, like we said, production's not there. I, at least for me, I love his game. I love his style of play. I think he's like, I think he's a legit, like he's a legit top six forward. And it feels good to have someone who kind of plays that style where he's, it's not heavy, but it's pesty. And it's not like he's, he's not like overly slow. Good on his stick. Yeah. I think that's the best way to put it. And like, again, I don't know. We saw him in front of the net against, against Dallas, where he, he scored that. Morgan that Riley typical. Typical. Yeah, yeah, which was pretty, pretty, pretty solid. And I think that's one element that he's bringing to the, the team is he's really useful on that on that second power play, can be used on that first power play. See that great tip for him there. There's a little replay here. Can we get, yeah, there we go. Not the best angle. But I think the biggest thing that he brings to the team, though, is this was in, was this the first game against Montreal where he just mauled people? Like, I, I oh, love the fit. <laughs> I love the fit of Tyler Bertuzzi here. I think it was a, uh, I think it's been successful. So I don't it's know how right. gonna... I feel like it's almost there. Yeah. If that makes sense. Him and Matthew well, Nice, I feel like it's been a very similar sort of season. Like it's almost there. You're seeing some great plays to extend zone possessions. You're yeah. seeing some great plays where they get themselves the puck. But then like it, it feels a little disjointed after that. We're seeing some good plays that aren't resulting in good chances on net. But we're seeing a lot of good plays, whether it's along the boards. A lot of it is like along the boards, I would say. Him getting, yeah. him being able to get himself the puck. Like it, the use of his stick is incredible. Like, it, it just fling, he almost like just flings his stick at the, the opposing player and he's able to get himself the puck and then start a zone possession from there. I feel like with when it was him, Matthews and Marner, it was maybe a, a few too many passes, like just a little bit of unfamiliarity. But I feel like no matter where you put, if you keep them in the top six, which they better, I don't know why they benched them last night. Yeah. you ha if, if you keep them in the top six, good things will come. Like it hasn't, as you mentioned, hasn't resulted in production yet, but there's a lot of good little things that we've seen with him. He's a good player and you can see it. Yeah. I, I I'm I'm happy with the Bertuzzi ad. It's not even like a wait and see. I think it's a good. It's a, let's call it a six. I think it's a success. I'm gonna call it a success right now. I wouldn't yet. He has three the, points in nine games. He's been playing top six. I think the production's gonna come. I think it I think, will be. I think you're it will hopeful. be a success. You're hopeful, right? Fine. You know what? You're right because we can't really we can't really make these drastic claims. It's only nine games into the season. Also, on top of that, he's been shuffled around. He's played on, like, give him ten games with the same line. But I are we even like are we even gonna see that? I don't know. Anyways. Dude, we're not even um, at 10 games. <laughs> I know, I know. But yeah, I'm 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 fine with the, the ad. Um, but yeah, I think that's fair to say is that it it's trending towards successful. The next one I want to talk about is Max Domi. I think that's the one that people are really disappointed with. Um depends what you expected from him. I agree, <laughs> right? Like I think I think some people had too high of expectations coming in with Max Domi as well. Like he hasn't like a lot of his, he's, he's, I feel like he hasn't really found a fit yet on this team. He kind of doesn't know what he, I don't, and I don't it think it's like glitchy has, Wi-Fi. Yeah. I feel like a team hasn't found a fit for him yet. No. And I think we had a perfect opportunity last game when we were losing, I think it was three, one at the time, halfway through the second period to Los Angeles, where we shuffled the lines. Right. And I think this is like a little bit of an indictment on Keith because he tends to do this a lot where it's like, okay, we're losing. Let's put Matthews, Martin, and Nyland together. That's good, right? We should be doing that. But like, we, I don't know if we should be doing that in a middle of October game, nine games into the season. Let's kind of see what we got. We know that works, right? That would have been, for me, a perfect opportunity to test out what Max Domi would, would look like on the top line. Maybe it wouldn't work, but Max Domi him. currently right now is only being utilized as a bottom six forward. It feels like there's a line through the middle of the of the team of the forward lines. It's like, these guys are playing here and then the rest of the guys are playing up here. Right. And I think that would have been a good opportunity right there to see what Max Domi would look like with the top line. I think the biggest problem with Max Domi is that one, he doesn't know what he is for this team. Is he a grinder for this team? Is he a skilled third line points guy for this team? Is he going to like, is he going to be playing any center for this team? Right? Like 
Mm-hmm. I feel like he doesn't really know his role. I feel like the team doesn't know his role either. I feel like a lot of that, that's the same thing with Klingberg. Mm-hmm. The one thing I want to say is that they haven't tried him at center yet. I don't think it's going to yeah. work on the first line. They haven't tried him at center yet. They have to try him at center. David Camp is not a good third line center. He's your no. fourth line center, which that's another issue I'll talk about in a bit. They have to try Dave Max Domi at center. I know he's not very good defensively. He just looks awkward on the wing as hell, man. Like yeah. it's, it looks so weird. Like a lot of these plays, it's like he's doing a good job transporting the puck up ice. And we'll say that. But then, like in the offensive zone, it just feels so awkward. It feels like he's overhandling the puck. Uh, like when you look at his first assist in the Tampa game, as I mentioned, that puck gets through one out of every 10 passes. Maybe he got lucky that went through because that's a backhand through three guys. As I'm, I'm repeating myself here. But then you look at the Nashville game, it was the same sort of thing. Like it was, that was a discombobulated pass. That wasn't a nice pass by any stretch of the imagination. Um, yeah. I will say he did have a really nice pass to Austin Matthews, uh, the Dallas game. And then Austin Matthews went through the legs on Scott Wedgwood. It was a good chance, but it was stopped. So that's my next thing. I, I Max told me doesn't matter on the wing, whatever. You have to try him at center next. He's a centerman. Yeah. And I mean, when you're looking at it also, Oh, is he a grinder? Is he a third line guy? Like he is where he belongs. Look at his production over the last what, three, four seasons, I would say? Four seasons? He hasn't hit 60 points. How can you be a second-line guy that hasn't hit 60 points since that one Montreal season, right? Can I say Can I say something quickly? Yeah. The guy playing on our second line, his most points in an NHL season came last year at 39. Who? Callie Crook. He's playing on the first line. Okay. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> first or second. He's not a first-line guy either, though. Yeah. So he's a utility guy. Yeah. And I think Max Domi, like, that's what I think they see Max Domi as as well. They like, they're kind of treating him as if he can kind of do anything, but I don't think he's the type of guy who like excels in the, Hey, I can do anything. Well, I think he needs to be told what kind of role. And I don't know what's going on behind the scenes, obviously, but but who, who, what line is there that it's, you're telling them what to do. They tried him all offensive line with uh, a Nylander Tavares. And it was horrible because, yeah. and he gave up a ton of defensive chances. But I, I, do you don't think that I think he has the ability to like play on that first line and, and have it maybe succeed with Matthews and Marner just because of his, he's insanely high, like very, very high skill ceiling. Like, mm-hmm. and I think that would, that just like, we've seen that that could work really well. Maybe it doesn't maybe work it well because I'd rather see him at center first. Yeah. Fair enough. I feel like they we're should... stretching it too much when he's, Oh, try him on the first line this skill set matches with this with this with this yeah from what i've seen he should just we should try him at center first in my i opinion. agree i agree i think we need to try him like we we if we don't see him at center if we have if we don't see him change at all like if we just see him playing that same left wing role with david camp as a center and we just see that one winger rotation where matthew nice maybe gets bumped up or something along those lines and Caliarco comes down on that, on that third line. I'm not going to be happy. I want to see more of a diverse, uh, like utilization of him. I don't want to see him s- like suck in that third line. I, I just, yeah. I, if it's not working, let's mix it up. That's it. But like, let's let's be smart about how we mix it up here. Let's give it some runway, um, especially because it's not working, and we've seen it now not work for it feels like nine games. So, yeah, yeah, it hasn't, it hasn't reach to the ability you've seen some flashes here and there but it hasn't reached to the ability that it it could it hasn't reached to an acceptable ability we'll even call that so tyler bertuzzi I, i'm confident we'll get there max domi i feel like you need to try more things with him because that's less of a player than tyler bertuzzi is right to be able to find that like your ultimate goal is you want to find that Dallas spot. He was solid in Dallas. He was good in Chicago for other reasons because he was playing 20 minutes a night. But he, that Dallas role where he was able to produce, you want to find that. So that's going to take a, a little bit more tinkering uh, to be able to find that. And I'm less confident in that working than Bertuzzi. We'll say that. But yeah. I think I I think I think it'll work. Maybe yeah, he'll, then- he'll get to a 40 point level. And then moving on from there as well, uh, John Klingberg. I feel like I can literally copy and paste what we said about Max Domi 
like we said earlier, and apply to John Klingberg. It's like, what do we want this guy to be for us? Right? That's um, the question. What do we want? The, what do we want him to do for us? Is he going to be playing like third? Do we want him playing like third, uh, the equivalent of third pair minutes, yes. sheltered role? Do we yes. want him to play on, on, on our second line with no. a more defensive player? Because no. right now, that's what they're they're aiming for. They're, they're, they're utilizing him at five on five, the third most minutes on the team. Now, mind you, mind you, uh, the difference between his ice yeah. time and like a guy like Lilligren and Giordano who are playing on the proverbial like third line or, or however you want to split up the pairings because we don't we don't have pairing one, pairing two, pairing three. A lot of like at least our bot, at least the pairing two and pairing three play very equal minutes. Pairing one is like the, the Riley Brody pairing has been eating majority of the minutes. The rest of the D kind of have similar five on five minutes. So it's like, what what do we want? What what are we expecting out of this guy? What do we want him to be for us? Right. I think he's listen, he got yanked off the power play. I still think he's been good on the he'll he is good for us on the power yeah. play. I think shooting regression was coming for him, but I don't know, maybe Keith he, wants he to... just he was making too many mistakes on the power play, also. Fair. So I think Fair Keith enough. just got sick of him and Fair pulled enough. him. Whereas Moore very... Riley was playing well. So. He is very prone to mistakes, and I I always very believe in rewarding enough. players who are playing well. But season long thing like this guy should have give us a higher ceiling ceiling on the power play. That's what I saw this year. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Um, but yeah, like we we need to. I think we need to I, I identify a role for these guys. I think like you know the like there's not too many places that Klingberg can go in my opinion. Like, yeah, I, me. Third pairing, that's it. We got, like you have to be playing him less. But the issue is Jake McCabe's out, so now yeah, Giordano okay, has to play more, and it's that Jake McCabe injury has caused some issues. Jake McCabe and John Klingberg were horrific together. I don't like they just didn't complement each other at all. Jake McCabe likes to get active in the rush, even though he's not an yeah. offensive player. He likes to get activated in the mm-hmm. plays. He likes to pinch. He likes to be act. Uh, he likes to, to jump up into the play and try to be an offensive guy. A little bit, even though it's it's not that good, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but and I will say that, like, the issue was John Klingberg is just anti defense altogether, so it didn't work whatsoever. We saw uh, McCabe's numbers get way better when he was paired with Lilgren, who's less active than than Klingberg. So if you can't play Klingberg on that second pairing where McCabe should be and will be. Where else is there? It's with Giordano. Giordano is able to cover uh, Klingberg's mistakes a little bit more, but when you like with Lagasin, it's it was a nightmare against the Kings. So, yeah, I think they they just it's it's coaching. I don't know if you sit. I don't think sitting him will be will do anything at all for his confidence or for for him. He's thirty years old, so I think it's just going to be. It's like a hope. He he played horrible yeah. last night. So this is the biggest thing though I want to mention about these additions and why I praised every single one of them in the offseason. All of these guys, it's like I'm not gonna bring in uh uh sorry, I'm not gonna bring in Bertuzzi into this discussion because I think he's been good for us and I'm not worried about him. But both Domi and Klingberg, guess what? They're signed to one year deal deals. Last year, Domi got traded for a second. Last year, Klingberg got traded for a fourth. Worst case scenario. You can dump these guys for less than that, and look, and you all of a sudden at the trade deadline have what is it, eight million dollars in cap space now? You can go out and get whoever you want. You can if these guys aren't working out, Maybe. you can ship them out. And yeah, you know what? You might lose a little bit on assets there, right? You might be paying a lot of, a lot of assets to bring a guy in, but hey, the the good the the most important part about these additions is that if they didn't work, we're not paying to get rid of them. Think about how many times last year where we almost got caught and think about how many times in the past where we've signed guys and have gotten caught because they have term that we have, they are so bad. They need to be off our team ASAP and we have to give assets to get rid of them at the very least, at the very least, we'll get something for these guys. If they don't work this year at the very, very least. So you're saying at least it's not Nick Ritchie and Peter Mrazek. (laughs) Exactly. Or Nicholas Abe Kubel. That's uh, that's one way to put it. I mean, I thought you were gonna say like the thing is with all three of these guys like they, they were like they they have something they have yeah, something I, to them and they but they, they have do. the big deficiencies against them. Yes, I don't so, know, but I don't know how easy it's gonna be if John Klingberg isn't playing first power play for the Leafs. 
how I don't know how easy it is going to be to move that guy. It'll be very easy. Morgan Riley looks the phenomenal Leafs for us. That's why he's Leafs. playing first power play. Yeah, but with the Leafs not retaining any salary, who's going to be falling been, over themselves to to acquire John Klingberg at four point one? No one. But the, he also got a fourth last year. There's going to be a team in the NHL that makes the playoffs that feels like they need a power play, a, a defenseman who can play on the power play, who fit a third line role for them. And you could. But again, I, the only reason why I'm bringing this up is this is the worst. Worst, absolute worst case scenario sure, is that yeah. we sell them. And you don't even, listen, you can just get rid of, like I, a team will take them on for like a contract slot. Like they'll swap contract slots. And, and as the Leafs, if it really is not working out for you, you don't care, fine. But I don't think they'll do that. I think we should, should still wait and see. I think these guys provide value for this team. Yeah. I think we just got to wait for it. Yeah, I think we got, we got to say trade. Them. It's, oh, it's way too early. But I, my entire point, sorry, maybe I didn't make a good point of this. My entire point with this is that in the worst case scenario, if things end up hitting, if shit hits the fan, if things end up going bad with these guys that like we feel like they can, they don't even belong on our roster, they they are not hard to to relieve ourselves of at all. We're not married to these guys. It's just a quick dip in the toe, right? We're all we're we're not even we're not we don't even have our our pinky toe in right now. We dipped our toe in the water. Let's get like ankle, knee, waist mm-hmm. deep, and then see what we want to do with these guys. Let's give it but some then- time. And I'm the worst case scenario is not this so, apart. Is I'm going to keep picking this apart though, because then those are three guys. Like you do, then do have to replace them. Of course, of so, course. And that's going to cost even more assets. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I I don't think anyone's. Well, I feel like Matthew Nice. Something's coming with him. Four yeah. points in nine games is, is not enough. He something's something's a brew in there. I will say that. I think we're going to see a pleasant surprise there. Um, to close it out, kind of, I, I think that's all we had left. To close it out, player of the month, William Nylander. Any oh, yeah. objections? Oh, yeah. I don't think there's any objection. What is he at? Was it 12 points in the month? Yeah. 12, 12 points. points nine games. In nine games. Um, Joseph Will made it close, but I'm giving it oh, to yeah. Nylander. Listen, the difference is that Nylander plays every game and more than point per game. Exactly. Got to give so, it to him. Yeah. Well, Any well, other thoughts before we close it out? That's it for me. Hopefully that trade take wasn't too crazy. <laughs> just it's it's not a take. It's just like in the worst case scenario, like like I'm planning for the worst case scenario. This is like the absolute worst is that we might get an asset. Like I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about it honestly. All right. Sounds good. All right. Thanks everyone for listening. Goalie skill.